Nate Diaz is a hard man to stand up to. He has gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with the toughest fighters on the planet and never flinched. But Justin Gaethje doesn't care. He sent a message to Diaz calling him out. So what did Gaethje say about Diaz's fighting record? And what did an accidental UFC leak reveal about Diaz's next opponents? Stay tuned to find out. Let's start with UFC 274. Justin Gaethje is just coming off a big fight against Charles Oliveira at UFC 274. Oliveira was set to defend the lightweight title at the event until some late weigh-in drama. Oliveira didn't make the weight and was half a pound over the 155-pound cutoff for the division. Instead of replacing him, Oliveira was allowed to fight in the event, but the result wouldn't win him the title. All the pressure was on Gaethje because only he could win the belt. Dana White said that the scales could have been altered by European athletes who might have altered it from the night before. White said that from now on, the UFC will hire a security card to oversee the scales. But all of that just meant that Gaethje had an opportunity to win the title which was now officially vacant. He had another chance back in 2020 against Khabib Nurmagomedov but lost by submission. This time it was the same story. The two lightweights traded blows early in the bout and Gaethje even knocked Oliveira down to the ground at one point. But he sprung back up after Gaethje refused to engage. Oliveira is clearly more comfortable in his submission game and it showed. After a clean hit to the jaw, Oliveira knocked Gaethje down and followed him there, swiveling around to his back and taking total control. From there, it was only a matter of time. Eventually, he had him in a rear naked choke and Gaethje was forced to tap out. Unfortunately for Gaethje, he was completely outclassed by the Brazilian champion. Now, let's talk Nate Diaz. But in the lead up to the fight, everyone had an opinion. And unsurprisingly, Nate Diaz was one of the loudest. Diaz criticized Gaethje's loss to Khabib in 2020 and thought that he had no chance to win against Oliveira. Gaethje had a few chances in the beginning, but never managed to make anything stick. In an interview, Gaethje said, Said, Charles Oliveira is going to have to walk through hell like Khabib did. He better be praying every day that he gets me to the ground. Diaz certainly didn't think that Khabib had to walk through hell and saw the loss as a pretty straightforward fight for the undefeated Dagestani. And Diaz would know. Khabib's most famous match was against Conor McGregor at UFC 229, who beat the Irishman on his feet before submitting him in the fourth round in much the same style as Nate Diaz did at UFC 196. Diaz shot to fame by winning the fifth season of the Ultimate Ultimate Fighter TV series. He's been in the sport since 2008, following in his brother Nick's footsteps. When he faced McGregor in 2016, he was filling in for an injured Rafael Dos Anjos and only had 11 days notice. But he didn't need much time. Diaz dealt with McGregor in just the second round via submission. That set up a rematch which Diaz lost by majority decision, but it remains one of the most entertaining fights of the decade. It went the full distance and ended with the two bloody competitors raising each other's hands. But that may have been the highlight of Diaz's career in some ways. Diaz hasn't fought in the UFC since June last year when he lost to Leon Edward at UFC 263. Everyone wants to see him fighting again. How did an accidental leak by the UFC reveal a clue about Diaz's next opponent? And who does Oliveira want to fight now for the title? Don't go anywhere because that's coming right up. Next step for Diaz. Having been out of the UFC rotation for so long, Nate is looking around at his next possible opponents. But who will be the fighter who has to deal with Nate Diaz's return? Well, an accidental leak by the UFC might give us a big hint. In an interview with UFC boss Dana White during UFC 274, a matchmaking board was visible behind him. There were a bunch of interesting matchups and Diaz was one of them. Who was scheduled to go head-to-head -head with him? It was Kamzat Chimaev, the Russian-born Swede who was taking the UFC by storm. His name first started floating around the UFC when the light heavyweight championship contender Alexander Gustafsson said that he was one of the best fighters he had ever sparred against. At that time, he was fighting his way through the Brave Combat Federation in the Middle East. By 2020, the UFC decided that they had to have him. His first fight in the competition was won in the second round, and then his second and third fights were both won by knockout in the first round. At the end of 2020, Chimaev had a rough time. He tested positive for COVID and had to cancel his fight against Leon Edwards. It was so bad that he announced his retirement from the sport on Instagram a few months later. But Dana White shut those concerns down, and Chimaev came back to fight at UFC 267, winning again. Now he is ready for a serious competitor to prove just how good he is. And Nate Diaz could be the perfect fit. He's universally respected, one of the toughest fighters in the UFC, and a master both on his feet and on the ground. Next up, trading barbs. When Nate tried to call out Gaethje and imply that he was an easy win for Oliveira, Gaethje responded that Nate was just a jealous bitch. He said that he found it funny that Diaz was trying to take a shot at him because Diaz himself has lost more than 
than 15 times, and is only bitter because he won't be getting a shot at a title anytime soon. In fact, Gaethje thinks that Diaz will never fight a world championship full stop. And this was all before his fight with Oliveira even happened. After the fight, Gaethje tweeted out his congratulations to Oliveira in a short message. For Gaethje, the future is not so clear. Kale Sonnen has suggested that there could be a Gaethje vs. Oliveira rematch to decide who gets the vacant title, but Oliveira doesn't seem too keen on that idea. Even though he technically didn't defend the title against Gaethje, he was already looking ahead to his next opponent. And for the Brazilian, there's only one name, Conor McGregor. Oliveira has called for McGregor to return to the ring instead of running away. He knows that this would likely be the biggest fight of his career and earn him the most money he's ever made. Even though McGregor hasn't won a fight in almost two years, he is still the biggest name in the sport. He even made his way outside of MMA to fight Floyd Mayweather in what was called the money fight to earn $100 million. So Oliveira is smart to be trying to call out McGregor and raise his profile within the sport again. Whether or not McGregor will bite is another question. At the moment, he already has his hands full with YouTuber turned amateur boxer Jake Paul. Finally, UFC 276. For the next event, there will be two little fights on the line. The first will be Israel Adesanya defending his middleweight belt against Jared Cannonier, and the second will be Alex Volkanovsky taking on Max Holloway in their third fight for the featherweight title. Cannonier has won his last seven fights, four of them by TKO. Meanwhile, Adesanya has only lost one fight in his MMA career when he went up to light heavyweight to fight Jan Blakowicz. He's widely considered the strongest middleweight in recent history and is one of the most exciting fighters the UFC has ever seen. And like Adesanya, Alexander Volkanovsky is a virtually unbeatable Australian. His only MMA loss came in 2013, which was three years before his UFC debut. He has beaten Max Holloway in both of their previous fights, both times it went the distance and was determined by decision. Holloway is one of the strongest contenders in the featherweight division and wants one more chance to take out Volkanovsky. Holloway has been in the UFC for a long time and defeated fighters like Jose Aldo and Charles Oliveira. Ten years ago, when Holloway was entering the UFC, Volkanovsky had just decided to turn professional in MMA. If Holloway can use this experience to outsmart the Australian, he might have a shot. Otherwise, it's going to be another long and painful night for him. Does Conor McGregor deserve a shot at the title against Charles Oliveira? And who are you most excited to see fight at UFC 276? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.